Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So the number of centenarians has significantly increased, rising from 151,000 in the year 2000 to 573,000 in the year 2021. As life expectancy continues to improve, the prevalence of individuals reaching the age of 100 is obviously also expected to grow. Centenarians are often seen as exemplars of successful aging, frequently experiencing fewer chronic diseases and maintaining independence in daily life well into their 90s. While genetics does play a role in longevity, modifiable factors are responsible for more than 60% of successful aging. And there are links in the description below to the article and the studies that I used to put this presentation together. To identify the specific factors contributing to such remarkable longevity, a comprehensive review of lifestyle and health habits of centenarians and near centenarians, that's those aged between 95 and 99 worldwide, has been conducted. This review, which included 34 observational studies published since the year 2000, highlighted four key factors that contribute to extreme longevity. First was a diverse diet with controlled intake of salt. Centenarians and near centenarians typically adhere to a balanced and a diverse diet. On average, their diet consists of 57 to 65% of energy intake is from carbohydrates, 12% to 32% comes from protein, and 27 to 31% is coming from fat. Their meals include staple foods such as rice and wheat, along with fruits, vegetables and protein rich foods like poultry and fish and legumes, while red meat consumption is generally on the moderate side. This dietary pattern resembling the Mediterranean diet is associated with a reduced risk of physical function impairment and also mortality. Additionally, a preference for a low salt diet is common among centenarians. Now, although only one study in the review measured mean daily sodium intake, which was found to be 1.6 grams, this still falls well within the World Health Organization's recommendation of less than 2 grams of sodium per day. That's approximately 5 grams of salt. Notably, the traditional Okinawan diet, followed by the Japanese centenarians on the island of Okinawa, contains an estimated 1.1 gram of sodium. This review also revealed that individuals with a higher salt intake, those who favoured salty foods and added extra salt to their meals, had a 3.6 fold increased risk of physical function impairment compared to those without a preference for salt. These findings suggest that a diet rich in whole grains, root vegetables, beans, legumes, fruits and vegetables with some red meat, but the focus on lean poultry, fish and plant-based proteins while carefully monitoring salt intake may contribute to extra longevity. And number two, we've got lower use of medications. Now, although centenarians are not immune to chronic conditions, they typically develop these conditions much later in life than the average adult. More than half of the centenarians in this review experience common issues such as hypertension, dementia and cognitive impairment. On average, they took 4.6 medications, with the most frequently used being blood pressure medications and drugs for heart disease. This finding aligns with a large health register-based study in Spain, where centenarians took on average 4.9 medications, compared to the 6.7 medications among non-centenarians. The lower number of medications taken by centenarians may indicate better overall health with fewer medical conditions. However, it is important to note that the data on medication use is often self-reported and may not be entirely accurate, especially among those with cognitive impairment. Polypharmacy, commonly defined as the simultaneous use of five or more medications, is prevalent among older adults and is associated with an increased risk of adverse events such as falls, cognitive impairment and hospitalisation due to harmful drug interactions. While the type and number of prescribed medications may not always be within a patient's control, it is crucial for healthcare providers to prescribe medications only when necessary, thoroughly inform patients of the benefits and the risks, and then regularly review all treatment plans. And number three, unsurprisingly, is getting good quality sleep. 
The quality and the quantity of sleep play a vital role in immune system function, stress hormone regulation, and cardiometabolic health. This includes obesity, high blood pressure, and also diabetes. Good sleep is associated with extended years of good health and reduced risks of chronic diseases. Now, this may seem like a strange request, but if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to do me a solid, there's no need to give me a thumbs up. There's no need to subscribe. If you want to help, please share the video anywhere is fine. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, X, or even Rumble. Really, anywhere is fine. Back to the video. In the review, 68% of centenarians reported being satisfied with their sleep quality. By comparison, a survey of adult sleep satisfaction scores across 13 countries in 2020 found satisfaction rates ranging from as low as 29 to 67%. The optimal sleep duration, they say, is somewhere between seven and eight hours per night. Strategies for achieving better sleep include maintaining a regular sleep routine, creating a restful environment, exercising regularly, and managing stress as effectively as possible. And finally, we have our living environment. More than 75% of centenarians and near centenarians in this review lived in rural areas. This trend is also reflected in the blue zones, regions known for high concentrations of centenarians, such as Okinawa in Japan, Sardinia, Costa Rica, and Ikaria in Greece. Although be aware there are now been many claims about the accuracy of the now 20-year-old study of the blue zones. The connection between nature and health and well-being is very well documented indeed. Exposure to green spaces has been linked to lower levels of stress, depression, blood pressure, type 2 diabetes and heart disease, all of which can contribute to an increased life expectancy. While the review did not encompass all lifestyle factors associated with longevity, existing research indicates that not smoking, avoiding alcohol or drinking in moderation, staying physically active and maintaining social connections are crucial for enhancing the likelihood of reaching 100 years of age. It's important to acknowledge that adopting these lifestyle changes discussed here does not guarantee that you're going to reach the age of 100. Conversely, some centenarians have been known to maintain questionable health habits. However, many older adults are striving to adopt healthier lifestyles to prevent and manage chronic conditions. The earlier you can adopt these healthier habits, the better positioned you will be to achieve a long and healthy life. Reaching the milestone of becoming a centenarian is indeed a lifelong endeavor. Let me know in the comments below how you stack up against these four key indicators that were covered in the study.